All right, it being seven o'clock on Thursday, January 14th, 2021, the Town of Abington Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing via Zoom. Uh, first order of business is old and new business. And we have the approval of the minutes from the November 12th, 2020 meeting. Um, does anyone wanna make a motion on those? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Minutes are approved. All right. Next up, Vice Chair, would you like to read the petition of Samuel and Judith Caselio? Okay. Uh, Zoning Board of Appeals, public hearing notice, the Town of Abington Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing on Thursday, January 14th, 2021 at 7 o'clock p.m. via Zoom on the petition of Samuel and Judith Cassiello, 36 Strawberry Lane, Abington, for a special permit under 175-32-I at 36 Strawberry Lane. The property is located on assessor's, assessor's map 58, lot 73 in the R30 zone. This will be posted on the agenda or email Nancy Hurst, Andrew Leverell, Chairman, Zoning Board of Appeals. All right, thank you. Our um, Samuel and Judith, um, Caselio, present. Nobody's here Hi, on that Amy. petition. Hi, Amy. Hi, Amy. Hi, Amy. All right, so when I saw Amy come out, I asked him to unmute her. You know, to unmute her. Yeah. Is there anybody trying to unmute on the first petition that is, is that the issue or? I, I do not see the uh, the individuals that you're looking for. Mr. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, do we have a motion to maybe just table this until the end, see if they show up? So moved. All right. So moved. All right, next up. Um, it's not quite 7.05 yet. Um, Andy, do you want to read that um, notice? Yeah, that notice, yes. Yeah. Public hearing notice, the, admin, the Town of Abington Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing on Thursday, January 14th, 2021 at 7.05 p.m. via Zoom on the petition of Nick Jenks, trustee, 103 Central Street Realty Trust for a variance for driveway under 175-47B1A three foot rule for a building commissioner, zoning enforcement officer for 103 Central Street. The property is located on assessor's map 40, lot 59B in the R30 zone. Link will be posted on the agenda or email Nancy Hurst at abington.com.mass.gov. Andrew Leverall, Chairman, Zoning Board of Appeals. All right, and are the Jenks here? Yes. All right, Mr. Jenks, how are you? I'm good, you? Good, thank you. Um, do you want to just take an uh, opportunity to tell us about the project and what's going on in the relief you're seeking? Yeah, so the previous owners came before the board and they got a uh, variance to run the driveway out onto Central Street as opposed to the frontage that's on Plymouth Street. So we took that, pulled our permit, built the house, put the driveway in through easements over two neighboring properties which was the plan all along. And then at occupancy, it came up that we were violating the three foot rule, which was pretty new at the time of the, when they came for the previous variance. So the issue is there's no way to get out there passing over those other properties into our easements without coming within three feet before we pass into them. And so at this point, the driveway is already built, correct? Yeah, the driveway and the okay. house have been built, finished. I think we applied for occupancy in September. Okay. And so this had previously come before the board and I, my recollection and from the minutes, we granted one variance and then there was an issue that we basically referred to town council or you know, we granted one and then basically said, the owner needs to look into this to determine whether or not they're going to need a second variance depending on where they go with the driveway correct 
Uh, my reading of the minutes was Marshall Adams was going to look into it. Okay. That's in the past. We're trying to. Yeah, no. no with it as it yeah. is now. And it's built. I mean, so there's that. Yeah, it's built. Our easements are at, based on the as built. So the neighbors who we have easements over have an ad, signed the easements with the driveway on them, you know, crossing their property, coming within. So they're well aware it wasn't anything that we tried to sneak by them after getting a broad easement or anything like that. You know, the easement clearly shows what we did. So there's no no surprises or anything like that for any of the neighbors. They know everything that's going on. Well, well can I say something? Uh, I did bring it up at that meeting that, that, that had to be looked up because the bylaws had just changed. Yeah. Uh, so it looks like something was overlooked, even though they were told to. Um, I mean, three feet. I mean, do we take it? Do we take it out, or do we we uh, give them a variance on something that we already approved? Uh, that's the question. You know, we already approved one variance. So uh, I did mention it because the bylaws had just changed, and somehow it got lost. It must have got lost in the in the shuffle. Someone didn't do the work, so. Mr. Jenks, so there was no other way to, to situate this that it would not be an issue with a three foot rule? Is that what you're saying? Or? I mean, in order to cross into an easement onto an adjoining property, we had to come within three feet of it. Yeah. Do you know, do you know how much it is actually what the dis distance is within that three feet? Is it? I mean, it starts over three feet and closes down to nothing, and then we cross into the property. Okay. In order to get get out onto Central Street. Yeah. So where exactly is the? I'm trying to look at it on this map here. Is it at the corner of the driveway? Um, at the beginning of the driveway. Is that what we're talking about here? It's pretty much. I mean, it's a good length of the driveway. Oh, it's the whole length of the driveway that you're three inches over. I mean, part of it, we haven't gotten a clear description of how it is. I mean, part of it, we're into his land, so we're not sure if that violates it, but. So when we're looking at this map and we're looking at the yellow, yep. is that what you're talking about? All right. Is that's that where I'd like the variance for you yeah, along the yellow. <laughs> okay. All right. And that's all three feet over or close to. Close to yeah, him. it depends if we're on, on his we're half on his property, half on ours. Does that mean we're within three feet on both sides? Okay. So I just wanted to do the whole line and kind of settle it. And it's already built. It's already up. It's already built, yeah. We applied for a permit, got our permit, and then at occupancy it came up that what we had applied for and built was in violation. Yeah, I thought I thought we'd be doing double variance on this. That's what I mentioned. It's it's, it's a strange thing how the bylaws change in this town. Um, yeah. And uh, again, looks like something was missed. So who do, who do you blame? It's already built too, so. Yeah. And the idea with this was to keep it off of Plymouth Street from what I remember. Right. Yeah, yeah Plymouth Street yeah. was pretty close to the intersection. A lot of the neighbors were upset about drainage, drainage issues with the driveway going in that way. So right. the solution was to send out to Central and make it a safer access and also appease the neighbors. All right. Okay. Anything else from the board? Uh, just so, Mr. Jenks, in order to qualify for a variance, we have to find that there's a hardship to you as a result of soil conditions, topography, or the shape of the lot. So can you just explain a bit about what the hardship would be yeah it goes back to the same hardship with coming on plymouth street due to a a drainage issue there coming over an existing swale and um actually a town catch basin would actually be rebuilt going out that way and it was a big concern to the neighbors what drainage issues that would create going on plymouth so the decision was to move out to central which Really, at the time, they should have applied for both variances, but that was before we were involved in it. We didn't have a chance to. Yeah. We bought the property, got a zoning letter that, you know, didn't say anything about it in the zoning letter. 
looking deeper into it when this came up, it was talked about. He's told me he did, but apparently. Yeah. Sorry, we're getting a little, someone's talking over you. I'm sorry. So I, I think I think you're right. I mean, from what I read from the minutes, that there was topographical issues and the shape of the lot. Both are, you know, it's a really uniquely shaped lot. There's no. Yeah, doubt. and even just the safety of coming out right near that light with the school and everything. It was yeah. just. Yeah. I think Central was just a lot better for everyone involved, neighbors, town, builder. It just. Yeah. Yeah. And the only way to do it is, with multiple variances. Variance. Currently. And it looks like your hardship is that someone forgot to come back and get another variance before they built everything. And so, yeah, it's already, yeah. yeah, it's built. So at this point it'd have to be raised and you'd have to basically, I don't know what you do for access. Right. You'd have to, yeah, we'd have to go through, our only choice I think would be to go through Plymouth Street, which would- Recreate all the issues. That, yeah. yeah, recreate every issue that was trying to be solved with this and, yeah. you know, put a significant toll on the neighbors and- Add to your expense as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah significantly. Hey, Amy, do you have anything to put in? Uh, any anything? Um, I, I don't. I think you've all brought up the points that I was going to bring up, which is that, um, Rich, I think that I think that you were. It, I don't know. I read the minutes, seem, seeming like you were hinting very, very much, very to to get two variances at the time, and they just didn't catch on. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, but yes, so because the because the bylaw was enacted prior to the application or prior to the variance being granted, you know it does apply. Um, there was no building permit, so the, the the section of the zoning bylaw does apply. I, I think that um, I think that you know Mr. Burbine is, is correct. The shape there's there's two things: there's shape and topography on this lot that create. A hardship, you know, to have this access, you know, where it may be. Um, you know, it's also, uh, you know, uh, reading the plan. Um, you know, I've gone through this with the building commissioner numerous times. You know, and the town manager numerous times. It, it's hard to even just. It's hard to even figure out: Are we on the? Are we close to a rear setback? Are we close to a side setback? Um, you know, it, it's just, it's it's the way that you look at all of these different lots, et cetera. So I think that by granting the first variance, um, which I think was, um, was correct because of access issues, by granting the first variance, we've got um, the shape of the lot would justify a, a second variance. I also think that in the preceding, um, in the preceding application, there were also some topography issues, which I think would also um, would also support the granting of a variance um, for this for the second variance. I'll call it. Okay. All right. Anything else from the board? Open it up to close the board. Open it up to the floor. Anybody here, or, you know, on Zoom for this petition wants to be heard. All right, hearing nothing, I'll close it to the floor. Um, I don't really have any much to add that's already been said by by everybody and Amy is, is with respect to um, the petition. No, I would, uh, I would make a, a motion that we approve the petition of Nick Jenks, trustee of 103 Central Street Realty Trust for a variance the driveway under 17547B1A three foot rule for a building commissioner zoning enforcement officer for 103 Central Street. I think they that he's met his burden um, showing a hardship based on uh, topography and on the shape of the lot. I have a second. A second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Good luck to you, sir. Well, it's already built, so happy <laughs> dwelling. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good night, everyone. You too. Thank you. All right. Next up is a petition of Rockland Realty Trust, Jason Kennedy, trustee, 208 Center Avenue. And you want to read that? Um, you guys are all set with me. I think. Well, uh, do you want to stick any, around for this one? Yeah. Could you stick around oh, for this one, please? I, I can. 
I can. Yeah. I, I don't have the application or anything, but I will. Oh, I okay. thought it was sent to you. Uh, Nancy, did you send everything through? Yeah, I never got a chance to, Rich. I'm sorry. Uh, not, not a big deal, Nancy. Not a big deal at all. I'll follow along. The Town of Abington Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing on Thursday, January 14th, 2021 at 7, 10 p.m. via Zoom on the petition of Rockwood, oh. Jason Kennedy, trustee, PO Box 1365 Pembroke for side yard <clears throat> setback variances under 17537C3C to a single family house instead of mixed use for a commercial building at 208 Center Avenue. The property is located on Assessor's Map 24, Lot 22, in the TOD zone. Link will be posted on the agenda or email and Hearst at abingtonma.gov. Andrew Leverell, Chairman, Zoning Board of Appeals. All right, Mr. Riley, this one's yours. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and Happy New Year. Welcome happy to New Year. Hopefully a much better year. Uh, my name is Attorney Sean Riley at 500 Washington Street. Uh, with me tonight online is Jason Kennedy, who is uh, the principal of Rockwood Realty Trust. He's the proposed builder of the house. And I know that uh, the property owners, Bob and Pam Whalen, are also listening in online. Uh, this concerns the property at 208 Center Avenue. And Mr. Chair, if it's okay with you, I can share some of the um, visuals on screen. Sure. It's, I think it's up to the moderator but to give you access. But yeah, that's fine. Ron, you're all set. All right, thank you, sir. I just want to, I'm new to this too, so hopefully I'll, I'll do my best to help um, make this all work for us. So I think you can all see the assessor's map on screen right now. Is that right? No. You cannot see that yet? No. Hold on one sec. We will. Oh, not that one. Wow, look at that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> Something. Oh, lost it. Lost it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to pick it up in a second. Gonna, I have to pick up the right screen and then all this new stuff. Okay, sorry about that. Okay. Yeah. Got that there? Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. There we go. This is the um, copy of the assessor's plan, just so we can all get acclimated okay. to what we're looking at. This property right here is 208 Center Avenue, which is Center Avenue is also Route 123 in Abington. This this direction here is heading towards Rockland. This, as you can see, is the railroad tracks. The railroad station is right down in here. This is Park Avenue heading uh, towards the police station. Sorry about that. And this is Reed Street. And this here is Island Grove Pond. So this is our subject property. You hear me now? I hear you, Liz. I just did. Okay. okay, ask her. Um, if I could, I submitted uh, a project description. Okay. I, like she, I think she's Samuel's iPad. Ask her if she's Samuel's iPad. I'm gonna read over this just to get everyone on the same page. Bob and Pam Whalen own the five, the large five-bedroom single-family home adjacent and adjacent land situated at and known as 208 Center Avenue, where they've lived for 30 years. The property contains 60,400 square feet of land and has 189 feet of frontage on the north side of Center Avenue. It features a large rear yard extending about 400 feet off of Center Avenue and a portion of the lot borders on Island Grove Pond. The front 200 to 250 feet of the Whalen's property is situated within the transit-oriented development district or the pod district, which requires lots to have a minimum lot area of 10,000 square feet and 50 feet of frontage. The Todd regulations also require only a five foot front setback, a 20 foot rear setback, and a 10 and 10 foot side setbacks. Thus, the Whalens could take their property and split it into three lots, each being at least 50 feet wide, or they could sell some or all of their property to a developer of a multifamily project or a commercial building or a combination of both, all of which are allowed by right or by special permit. The Whalens sought to sell their property and retire, but they've been looking for a buyer who will A, would be willing to renovate and save their existing Victorian home, and B, commit to preserving the beauty of the waterfront property by not building a multifamily or commercial development. Rockwood Realty Trust, Jason Kennedy, has signed a purchase and sale contract with the Whalens, which is subject to the condition that Rockwood can purchase the Whalen property only if Rockwood can obtain the necessary permits and approvals to renovate the existing family residence and then build no more than one single family house on the large lot to the western side of the Whalen property. 
Pursuant to section 17537C, however, the planning board must grant a special permit in order to allow the construction of a structure which is 100% residential, specifically the desired new single family residence. And the planning board, I can tell you, did grant this special permit on their, at their meeting on January 4th. Approval of the 100% residential use now triggers a change in the setback requirements under 17537C3C. All residential setbacks must now be 25 feet. So in order to have a proposed new single family house line up with the front setbacks for the other nearby homes, as opposed to building a new house way out back behind the abutting homes, a two foot side setback would be required from the zoning board if no garage was to be included. To build a single family house with an attached garage, variances for both side yard setbacks are needed and have been requested. And I refer you to our submitted plan. We believe that the construction of a new single family home with a garage between the Whalen's existing single family home at 208 Center Ave, the Victorian, and the abutting two family home at 198 Center Avenue, which is owned by Father Buckley, that is consistent with New England style. Requiring the builder to locate the house about 250 feet off of Center Avenue will greatly increase costs, much more pavement, longer utility lines. It will also subject the house to the Wetlands Protection Act, permitting requirements and restrictions, and creates potential neighborhood issues by building a house behind other neighbors on Center Ave, Reed Street, and Park Avenue. The approval of the side yard setback variances also guarantees that the bulk of the land will remain as lawn and open vegetation and will also have minimal or no impact on the wetlands, meaning the pond at the rear of the property. In comparison, a commercial or multifamily proposal would likely require more pavement, underground drainage, utility lines, less vegetation, larger buildings, and could potentially change the character of the locust property and the value of the abutting properties. The applicant respectfully requested the zoning board vote to approve the requested side yard setback variances of five foot and 11 foot, as a submitted single family home proposal will eliminate the hardships arising from the building from building the house closer to the pond will provide the most benefits to our neighbors and will allow us to preserve the existing Victorian home. To give you a little bit more information or more of a visual, this is an aerial photo of the area. This again is Route 123 or Center Avenue. This building right here is the Whalen's house, 208 Center Avenue. This is the large garage building behind it that exists. It's dilapidated and it is to be removed. This is Father Buckley's house, a two family. Uh, this is another uh, a resident, um, a, a residential use, and this is the uh, retail store in the corner of Park Avenue. And here you can see part of Island Grove in the, in the rear of the lot. As you can see, we plan on building the house. We like to build a house right in this area, so it's essentially in line with all the other residential buildings. And you can see there are, not with the exception of this corner retail store, there are, all of these are all residential buildings on this side of the street. Um, we are planning to, if the setbacks are approved, the house would be built here. We would utilize the existing driveway. The Whalen's house would keep, keep this existing driveway. We'd be able to remove all of this pavement that currently exists out back and we remove this building. So this entire area out back would be lawn area. And if I could just blow that up a little bit more, you can see this, all this would be removed and the house would be built in this general area. This is a copy of the plan that we submitted and which we're seeking approval for. Uh, which seeks the house, the location of the house to be up near the street like the other houses uh, adjacent to this property. It would require the setback variances. Now under Todd restrictions, Todd regulations, typically you need a 10 foot side yard setback variance if you're using, if you're building multifamily um, or mixed use properties. No, John, can I ask a question on that sure. before you go on? So under the uh, dimensional and density regulations for the Todd, you need 10 feet, but you can be zero feet by special permit. So would the, under this, under the, the controlling regulations, do we need, do you even need a variance or would you just be in a special permit? Because Todd says we can, we can go that the, the side yard setbacks are controlled by a special permit, not necessarily a variance. But is this a residential single family home? Right. Once you go, I, I just misspoke. I just said if you if you build multifamily or commercial, you can have ten feet. It's actually if you have mixed use or commercial, you can have ten feet. Right. Once you go to one hundred percent residential, you're supposed to try to you're supposed to move it twenty five feet off the side lot or any lot line. Okay. So you're looking for five feet, right? Yes, I'm looking for a five foot variance on this side. Yeah. And it would be eleven feet uh, on this side. Oh. 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 Okay. The um. 
as you can see, this is the Whalen House right here, the 208 Center Avenue. So we're trying to line it up essentially. This is about 30, our new house would be about 36 feet off of the street, but just slightly behind Whalen's. And I think if you saw that aerial, it would also be behind the Buckley House. Okay, so we're just trying to basically line them up the way the other ones are. This one's up closer. This one's a little bit set far, far out of the back, but it allows us to use this driveway for off-street parking. Okay. But I guess I guess my point was if you if the relief required for a regular TOD is just a special permit for the side yard setback, why wouldn't it be for the side yard setback, even though it's residential, because you're still within the TOD district? Do you get if what I'm? Yeah, I do, and, and I wish it was that easy. Um, it doesn't, once you go to 100% residential, that, that section 175, um, 37C. Okay. Sections, so it's 37C3C basically says once you go all residential, the residential building should be 25 feet off. Mm -hmm. If we were to have this as a mixed use building, we don't need to get away with it. Yeah. Right. We can have 10 feet or like you said, Andrew, we could go to zero. Um, By special, special permit. permit. Correct. Okay. And then I guess my other question on in the same vein was if, if it's the planning board who can basically has the authority to say you can make this 100% residential, would it be the planning board then therefore has the authority to determine whether or not you're within the requirements? Do you know what I mean? No, no, not in this case. Um, it's just the way the TOD is written. The planning board has the decision whether we can go 100% residential and then if we can't conform to any of the other dimensional requirements, such as setback, we would go to the, to you, the zoning board. Okay. Now, now, can I just ask another question? What's stopping the builder from, from selling the property and, and um, having someone else develop it? The, you're talking about the Whalens or the builder? The, uh, this is, is, is this, is this uh, property being built? Is this, is this home being built? Yes, this so house, well, if, if you approve the variances, the house will be built in this area, right? As we were showing on the submitted plan. Before they be, sell it, before they sell the property? No, they would, the Whalens would, the plan is the Whalens, uh, the agreement with the Whalens said with Rockwood Realty Trust is that they would sell the property to Rockwood Realty Trust. The Whalens would reside, continue to live in their existing house oh. while the new house is being built. Oh. Um, during that time, the Whalens would be looking to purchase a new house. That, as, as I mentioned in my application, they're looking to retire and relocate. But So they will be living here um, for several months after this hearing, basically, and during construction, likely. Well, I'm just trying to figure out what happens in the future if the building gets knocked down and then they build condos in the back or apartments in the back. I'm just... Oh, that, I mean, Mr. Negrelli, yeah, that's true. Of any of these sold. buildings, yeah. anything could be sold and taken down. Oh, but yeah. as you know, Definitely. it would have to go to site plan review and right. any right. other uh, zoning that it might need for whatever new project it would be. Right. Um, we're proposing right now is to, to put just a single family house here, which would essentially block any development out back here, unless, as you said, someone bought these kind of buildings and ripped them all down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All righty. Um, and, and related to that, and I did include this in my application, but I thought it was important. Um, the Whalens could make more money by selling it to a developer, like you just mentioned. Um, you know, it is land in the TOD district. It does allow uh, commercial development, mixed use as of right. It allows multifamily uses with, via a special permit from the planning board. But the Whalens didn't want the property to be developed commercially with condos. They reviewed the options with the smallest impact and also eliminated options which did not preserve their existing house at 208 Center Avenue. They selected option A1, which I'll show you in a second. Option A1 proposes to preserve the existing Victorian house and it constructs only a single family house, but requires a special permit from the planning board for the residential use and side yard setback variances from the zoning board, which is why we're here tonight. So we started sketching out some things of what you could do. And this is essentially what we're proposing keep the existing house with the existing driveway, build a new house and use the existing driveway, rip up everything out back and make this all grass and vegetation. That and what, what is that house. red line in between? Sorry, John. What's Sorry, that red this, line is the, this is the estimated new lot line between this lot and the new lot. Right now, the, the, the Whalens own the, the whole 60,000. So are they, are they separated? Are they gonna be separated in the sale? Yes, the exactly. Yep, oh. they would be separated. Is there any other access to the, the, the lots besides the no. frontage? 
No. Oh, okay. It's, it's water out back here. Okay. Only by boat, I guess you could say. All right, okay. Mr. All right. Mr. Chairman, may I may I ask sure. a question? Yep. Um, so are the um are the setbacks that we're talking about for these new these two new lots? For just this lot, this yep. lot, we're looking for the setbacks for the new constru construction. How it's been interpreted, um, Attorney Questel, is this building, because it's existing, would have to remain 10 feet off of the new lot line. Any new construction has to abide by the 25 foot setback mm -hmm. requirement or get a variance. Mm -hmm. So it's only on the side, the only, the only setback you need is on the side of, with the new lot line. What about the other side, the, the existing lot line with Father Buckley's house? Do they meet yes. that? Yes, because we would, the, the okay. plan that we submitted, I'll back up to that, shows a 20 okay. foot setback here. Okay. Instead of what is now required 25, not 10. If we can combine, we do com uh, conform to the 10 foot setback, but not to the 25 in order to put the house where it typically would build. So would you build. need 25 on both sides for the new house? Yes, 25 foot setbacks. And you don't have either one? Correct. Right. Got it. Okay, thank We're you. Trying to trying to put it in the middle, but we wanted yep. to basically utilize as much of the space. Um, the Waylands have a, a long relationship with the Father Buckley and have had conversations about this. And um, I'll also talk more about um, Father Buckley and as we move forward. Oh, sorry. No, no problem. Um, so this was option A1 that, the, that we looked at. Um, option A2 was if the variances are denied, the only thing you could do is try to build the house out back here and shrink the size of this lot. That would keep us 25 feet off the side lot lines, but now we create those hardships I spoke about. Now we have about a 225 foot driveway, 225 foot utility lines, water, sewer, electric, and the water line is about right here. So we're in within the 100 feet under wetlands protection regulations. So it creates other issues. It also creates privacy issues because now we're in the Casey's backyard. We're in the backyard of this house and anyone who has the view of the pond out here, we're now in the backyard. Not the ideal setup when we have other options. This is, you know, if they wanted to go and build a condo, as we talked about, we could sell, if you wanted to save this house but develop this land, you could get a special permit and build multifamily, or you could just build a commercial building out here, um, just having the driveway on its own. That, if it's a commercial building, it wouldn't need any variances. It would need site plan approval, but no variances. Um, Again, we could just split this, take down the, the current house and just build two new commercial buildings if we wanted to and build some uh, paved parking areas. Um, option C was you have enough land and enough frontage to create three lots. We could have, again, theoretically, these could be mixed use or commercial buildings, condos out back, all sorts of mixtures of what you could do with associated parking. Um, here's just another option that we sketched out. Um, none of these were, satisfactory to the Whalens. Of course, they could have sold the property for much more if they sold it under one of these, to one of these developers with multi-units or commercial development or mixed use, but that is not what their goal is tonight. Here is just a more simple eight unit condominium, whether it's commercial or residential, we stay away from the water on this one. Um, that would need site plan review and whether it's a special permit for residences or mixed use does not need a special permit or a variance and commercial would not need a variance. And then finally, what one more we looked at was two small commercial buildings, another building out back, whether it's residential or commercial, you know, there's different options. But it all comes back to this is what the Whalens uh, have made a contract for. This is all they want to see. This is what Rockwood Realty Trust has agreed to, but it requires variances to allow the house to be placed in this location. And An option A1, no garages, right? No, this is with a garage. I mean, this okay. this house is not this house is not built to scale because these were sketches back gotcha. at the time we were discussing. Um, and I wanted to also uh, talk about the fact that we did talk with Father Buckley, and I did include. I think Nancy forwarded this email train to you. The string. Yeah. Um, Father Tom had asked that we just add some arborvitaes, um, specifically the green giant mm -hmm. arborvitaes, which we've agreed to. Uh, so if the board is willing to grant the variances, we would ask that you include a written condition that we would have to plant a hedgerow of green giant arborvitaes along the side lot line area from the front to the back of the new house, uh, again, on that Buckley side. Um, so again, I, um, that is the, the proposal. In order to make it the least type of development with the house lined up, we do need the side yard variances. Um, I hope that 
gives you enough detail. But if I could also kind of just hit on some of the variant standards, if you don't mind, Mr. Chairman, sure. if I can kind of put this all together and wrap it up. One of the questions, like you mentioned, one of the early hearings is, you know, uh, owing to circumstances relating to soil condition, shape, topography of the land or the structures. In this case, the positioning of that existing house, because we're trying to save it and preserve it, that dictates, of course, where the lot line is going to be. It has to be at least 10 feet away, which then leaves us with the remaining property for, uh, to decide where the next, the second house could be. Um, the fact that this is the only lot on Center Avenue between Cottage Street and Park Avenue, the only one that has frontage on Center Ave and has water out on the back, has frontage on the, the pond. And of course, that immediately triggers wetlands protection restrictions on uh, if we were to do anything out back uh, to, near the pond. A literal, literal enforcement of the provisions, uh, would it involve substantial hardship to the petitioner? As I described earlier, yes, it would. If, you, if we can't, if, if the variances are denied to have the house located up front, we would only be allowed to put it out back, which does substantially increase the construction costs, as I mentioned, pavement, sewer lines, water lines, electric lines. We do create privacy issues. Now you're building a house basically in three backyards. And we also now have different conflicts and different zoning, uh, not zoning, uh, wetland restrictions that we trigger. If the house is located up front, there is no wetlands protection issues because we're leaving that land out back in its uh, current condition. And then with the relief, uh, if it was granted, create any substantial de detriment to the public good, would it nullify or substantially derogate from the intent or purpose of the bylaw? I would say no, no substantial detriment whatsoever. It's actually a benefit to the abutting properties in that it allows us to maximize the green space because we'll be removing some of the pavement and that large barn out back. It's a complementary front yard setback to the neighbors to the left and right and down the street. We're allowed, uh, by doing this, we're intentionally trying to utilize the existing driveway curb cut and it, in effect, limits the development of this property to a single family house. It doesn't nullify the purpose of the bylaw because the bylaw itself, as we were talking about, in its uh, original condition, it allows 10 foot side yard setbacks and it allows five foot front yard setbacks. Uh, we, are going to, we are proposing 20 foot setbacks and a 14 foot setback. Um, because of that residential, 100% residential uh, subsection, we do need to request variances for you to approve that. In all other respects, the lot would have at least its required 50 feet of frontage. It has, has to have at least 10,000 square feet. It's going to have over 30, over 30,000 square feet. And again, we would ask that you approve the variances subject to the condition that the builder would be required to install a hedgerow of green giant arborvitaes from the front to the back of the new house uh, along the Buckley side, line, lot, uh, side lot line area. I've said a lot and I've put a lot in front of you, but I hope it uh, makes sense and uh, understands it. And I do think that we've satisfied all the tenets of the uh, uh, variance. Um, and I should mention that uh, Jason is here. I want to compliment him. Jason has been a builder for over 15 years. He's built in the town of Abington uh, some new houses, and he's also renovated some of the older houses in Abington. So he's got a lot of experience in the building inspector. He is familiar with Jason and his quality of his work as are the Whalens. So we appreciate your time and hope that you'll... Uh, support this petition. All right, thank you. Um, so just a very basic question for clarification purposes. So the lots themselves, you're subdividing into two lots, both lots are in the of themselves gonna remain conforming lots, it's just the structures on them need the variances. Right, we can create conforming Correct. lots, that's not a problem. Yeah, okay, okay. I just, because yeah, I just wanted to get that on the record. We're not basically taking the conforming lot and creating two non-conforming lots. Right, no, we're not doing that. Yeah, okay, okay. And uh, can I say some, um, by doing this, you've created your own variance too, by, by getting the special permit through the planning board. And to build it the way you wanna build it, you're creating your own variance this, this way. It's a, you're right, it's a double sword. Right, right. I mean, this this uh, Todd district was created in this area and accepted by the town, and that's where they are right now. I mean, th that's where we are. And if you look in that area, that's what you'll see. You'll see a lot of single family, not single family homes, but two families, apartments, condos, businesses, uh, and th and that's what that area was designated um, by the town and the people. That's what they voted for. That's so, right, and that's um, that's the reason why you're required to get a special permit from the planning board to allow right, the, right. the the use has already been allowed tonight. Before you is simply the setback. 
that question. Right, right. But uh, just that's the history on this area too. That's right. That's and all. as I mentioned, we are surrounded by residential uses. Right. On yeah. That side of the street. If you're on the other side of the street, I mean, it's more commercial. Yeah. Because that's more developed. Right. Yep. I do, do want to just um, note one thing for you, gentlemen, um, so we're clear. This lot line right here is actually an existing lot line and an old plan. Um, if you grant these variances, we will maintain the variances, but the plan that we'll submit um, to create the two lots will probably straighten this lot line out so that if either neighbor eventually puts up a fence, it'll be a straight fence and not a crooked fence. Um, that doesn't change the, the variant, the side yard setback variances, but I just wanted you to be aware so that, frankly, I didn't want you to prove it per the plan submitted, but if you could. Right, that, that's another thing. I mean, the plans ain't really um, certified if I would. I mean, they, they seem to be like, you're giving us like five different things that they could do. And you're not really showing us what the building's gonna look like. Um, and, you know, a really good um, plot plan, if you will. Um, like you said, it is kind of a strange map here, it kind of curves the line does. I mean, it just seems like you need a better plan to show that, us too. That was an issue. Well, I, was, I was gonna raise that issue as well, Sean. I, I'd like to see what the actual plan of land is going to is, as opposed, this is, this is a proposed site plan versus a real plan of land as to how the lot's gonna be divided up. This is the, the, the existing plan uh, at the registry deeds currently. Right. But, but, but what but I would be looking for, I, I would let, if, if we're going to do this, and I'm not certain we will, but if, if we're going to do this, I think we want to do it based on a plan that you've submitted. Not, not, not a proposed site plan that you say may change. It needs to be on a plan that this is what we're going to do. And I, as it written said too, I'd also like to see what the building is going to look like. The gas built. Well, if, if you were, if, if the board is, okay, if the board wants to approve this plan as it is, we'll do that. We just thought for long-term planning and town council, correct me if I'm wrong, there would be no change to your, if you were to approve the variances, making this lot line straight does not change your variance. Um, instead of making this lot 35,675 uh, feet, it might make it 30. 35,200 feet. But we, we, but to respect, um, we would like to see what it's going to look like when it's all done. I mean, okay, uh, a cleaned up uh, version of it, um, I, I think. I, I may be wrong. Well, I, I would, I don't know. The house itself, we're not, it isn't fully designed because we don't have your permits. So we don't have a buyer for the house to work out the details. Uh, typically, Jason builds all sorts of New England stuff. Jason, if Jason's online with us. You build garrisons, split levels. Uh, we are looking for the two bed, uh, sorry, the two, the sorry, the attached garage um, because it's a cleaner looking building and it's New England. Um, and there are a couple of houses with attached garages. There are also a few that don't have a, uh, garages that you're seeing some cars parking on lawns. And that's something we want to avoid. I, I'd like to, I, I would like to see more. To be honest with you, and, and, and the other question I had, Sean, initially, that what you sent to us was a proposal for the twenty foot in the fourteen point three, but then there was another plan where you only required uh, a variance on one side. It was only for about two feet. It was a smaller house. I, I assume is that what? It has no garage. No garage. So you've chosen to go the other route, obviously. With, with the garage versus the no garage and look for two variances versus one, which would be much more limited as to what we would have to give. Yeah, I'm asking the board to basically look at the big picture um, of what would look best for the neighbors and, and what would be best for the, the future residences. A house with garages would be better. It's, it's typical New England styles to have a garage given especially what it is. And that this house being on Route 123 to be able to have garage parking is a good benefit. So, you know, you're not having, if you had guests over, they're not having to park on Center Avenue. They can park in the garage and they can park in the driveway. Um, I don't, I, we but, just but, think it's a better house. Right, but you're, you're bringing a proposal in front of us and so we really can't visualize it. Um, you know, we can't visualize the building. 
Um, we have a little hard time looking at the, the plane itself. Um, I don't know if you guys agree with me or not. I, I do, Rich. I, I, those are the two things I had written down is, is what had concerned me initially is, is uh, I, I think we'd want something more specific. That is a sample of a house that uh, he has built in the past. He's also built some houses up on in Century Estates. I mean, there's, you know, it's a typical New England style house with a garage, attached garage. Well, it's a New England style house, but I, I did I did get the chance to watch the, the planning board's meeting and you, when you were in front of them and they had some concerns as to what style. And they said, we can't control what you build there, but we strongly urge you not to put up a, a split level and, and, you know, something that conforms more with the neighborhood and the, the character of the neighborhood. So I would like to see what is being proposed. Jason, do you, I mean, I know it's, it's early in the game. Typically, I don't know, Jason, if you have any idea what your options might be in that, that footprint. Well, it's um, a balance between um, trying to make everything work for um, the zoning board, uh, the Whalens, and what we came to agreement with the planning board. Um, definitely a home with a garage is going to be a lot more, more attractive to a buyer. Um, and like you said, parking on Center Ave wouldn't be ideal for anybody. Um, so, uh, yeah, I know the planning board had reservations about maybe a raised ranch, uh, but that's also a typical style home that I've built many, many of, uh, and even in the town of Abington. Um, and uh, if there are certain cost limitations as well, um, due to the nature of the uh, construction market right now. So I'm trying to make everything work um, for the Whalens, the town, and uh, myself too. I mean, I have to tear down that uh, dilapidated barn, which is a benefit to the town. I mean, that that um, is in extreme disrepair, um, which is expensive to remove too. So um, in regards to the house style, uh, I'm trying to find something that is um, reasonable to build in this economic climate that we're in, uh, I mean, housing material costs are up but now over 60 percent so um, it's a real challenge so we're trying to find a home that would fit that criteria okay but you guys not understand me um we have a, we, we have a we have a um, the first people that were supposed to show up today we have a diagram a plan of the house this is what we want we want a diagram of the house that's being built pictures of the house that's being built. We want to see what's being built there. It's, it's, it's not a difficult thing we're asking, um, really. No, okay, I mean, there's two ways to, when, when you're in the construction business, you know, you can either, you know, you, if you have a buildable lot, you then seek a buyer and determine what type of house the buyer would like to build. Or you build a spec house, you pick the design and start building it and hope that someone likes that style of house. Um, we didn't think the zoning board would be asking us to, you know, select a style of house as part of the setback hearing. Um, so, you know, but you're asking for variances, though. Yes, and that that fifty foot that fifty foot by twenty eight footprint would fit a standard house with attached garage. You now, and whether it's the the, the type that I just showed you or a different style, it has to be within that fifty foot. Um, footprint if, if you were to approve it. Good. If the house is slightly smaller than that because the buyers don't want the extra two feet, that's fine. We're, we would still be within that building box. Okay, can I ask the board something? The board, uh, gentlemen, um, what do you think? I mean, we usually see plans for additions, for in-laws, for whatever people are going to put on their property. I mean, what, what does the rest of the board think of this? I told you already what I thought, Rich. I agree with you. Any, Andrew? <laughs> I mean, I would, I would like to see plans, yes. It and is helpful to see, like to see so you can, well. I mean, it is helpful so you can visualize what the, the project's gonna look like, but at the same time, I can appreciate the fact that you don't have a buyer, so you, you can't really construct a house knowing what their particular taste is gonna be. So maybe at that point in time, you come back and look up for the variance. Maybe maybe a buyer says, we don't want that big house. We don't need a variance at all. If, if you're not gonna build it 
on your own and you're waiting for somebody to come in there and say, this is what I want, then I think you're premature in, in being here actually, because you, you don't know what is gonna be built there. So, um, Mr. Mr. Chairman, um, if I may. Sure. Um, so from the aerial um, photograph, it, it, it seems that the um, that the pond kind of comes in as as almost almost like a, a finger onto this property, um, and so you know I, I think there's probably just by looking at it and on, I didn't have the application ahead of time, but just by looking at it on the screen, it appears that you know this this pro probably could meet one of the variant standards with regard to the shape because you do have that utility line, you do have the water, etc. Um, but I think that. I think that the board might be correct in the fact that if they so so if they approve a variance for 10 feet from the lot line and then you come you go to the building department and you have your house is 10 feet from the lot line but you're putting your garage behind the house and it's going to come in a little bit so it's only so it's actually you know 15 feet from the lot line on this side um, then that's a different story. Your variance is different. And then, so when then, and then in 10 years or 15 years, when they come back and they want to put an addition on and the board's now trying to figure out how much more, are you making this more non-conforming or less non-conforming? We won't know because all we have for this variance is a square. Um, so I don't, I don't necessarily think that, and, and you guys, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think they're actually looking for architectural drawings to show the front of the house and when, where the windows are and what color you know it's going to be. I think they're just looking for a footprint that's going to show, you know, here's the front of the house, here's the front porch, here's the garage, here's this cutout and this cutout, you know, and and that way, all of the setbacks as you know the whole house will, will get all the setbacks, and then they can vote on. The variance for all of those setbacks, um, you know. In in my opinion, I think there's a there's there's a compelling argument, you know, for a variance. Um, obviously, we only have the the three elements that we can look at for a variance, but but I think we might have one of them with regard to the water coming in. But um, I I think I agree with Richie. Can I ask off of the the plan that is submitted? In the notes um, says it's proposed as a 28 by 50 raised ranch with a two car garage under. Um, that is the sample uh, house that could be built in that footprint. So um, there's no st there's no steps out front. There's no steps out back. There's no porch. Nothing. Um, Jason, okay, if you can educate all of us, is this this would that be considered a raised ranch with two car garage under? That is. Yeah. Yes, that is right there. Okay, so that's a that's a similar it'd be some a house similar to that uh, could be used could be constructed in there. Now a buyer may say they want something changed a little bit here or there. Um, so it, I can't I don't want the I don't want to show anything and have and have the board think that a, this is exactly what we would build because a buyer may change a window or eliminate a, one of the garage bays or something. So no back deck. I'm sorry. No back deck. Uh, Jason. Uh, actually, on the plans, there is a deck on this this um, drawing. And it's part There's of the part of the rectangle. Yeah, no, it's up. And so uh, it goes around. It goes the whole house. Then the back of the whole house. No, it's just kind of. Sean, if you, you show this me. one, you want to show this door again? Oh so, yeah, let me. I can pull that up for you on the screen. Uh, let's see if I can do this right. Um, oh, sorry. That would be a 12 foot by 12 foot back deck. And that site plan also shows the water line coming up in the back of the property too. Right, the edge pond water elevation. Yeah, correct. There's a lot of lots back there, that's for sure. A lot of what? Lots. You got what, 1A, 2A? I'm not sure what you're looking at. No, I, no, I'm just looking at it. I see what you're saying. I got it. So lot, lot 2A goes all the way to the back. Right. Yes, yeah. uh, the, the, the new lot with the new house would go all the way to the pond. Good. Like that. 
So there's the pond line back here. And that pond line changes each year. It's not coming up, Sean. It's not coming up, no. Oh, I'm, but you're not seeing it right now? No. Really? We see your screen, but. Sorry, let's try this again. You see that? Yep. Yes, yes. I'm sorry, so this is, this lot, this would be the lot, this is the pond line right now, currently. As I was saying, this, this lot, this water line changes over the years. Um, this is where the house is, the new house. This is the existing house. This barn here is actually bigger than the proposed house. The barn is approximately uh, 75 by 40 feet uh, structure, like a 3,000 square foot structure, which would be removed. This house would be 50 by 28. I mean, if, I, I don't know if the, I don't know how to best address this. Um, if the board wants to say that you don't want a certain style of house. No, no, it's not that. We just want to see what the house is going to look like. I mean, usually, yeah, usually there's diagrams. Well, there would be if, 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 I think we're, we're kind of. Yeah, I know. I mean, basically you got five different ways you could build here. And, and this is the this is the one you want to go with. Um, I got you. I mean, typically, not typically, but many times builders, developers will put a plan in front of you and show the, the footprint of the proposed building square. As long as you're inside that square, you're good. In this case, this is the typical house that I showed you. Um, the 28 by 50 raised ranch with a two car garage under is 28 by 50. That's what we show you. We can't build anything wider than that because that's not what we're asking for. We're asking for a 50, 50 foot wide footprint for the house. But, but you're actually not, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you're, ask, you're asking for um, 50 foot wide plus whatever, 12 off the back, correct? There is a deck that's shown off the back, proposed deck, right. it could be adjusted. Right. But is that is that deck within the setback? Um, no, it, it's not any closer to the house. I mean, to the sideline in the house. The, no, but it is within the setback. It is within twenty feet or twenty five oh. feet. Yeah. See. Yeah. So, so that's here. also part of this variance. Correct. The entire footprint is yes. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. So so that is your footprint, and and I apologize because before I haven't I didn't see the deck. I thought you were just yep. permitting no, no, a square. No so, so that is, that's your footprint. So when you go to the building department, that's what you have to show because that's what your variance is based on. So if you carve out anything or add anything, it, it's not gonna work because when in the future, cause now you, cause you're, you're creating a non-conforming structure. So if you wanna, you know, extend it or add to it or do something in the future, we need to know what you were given permission for now. But okay. I think if, if this is what you're going to build and and the house that you showed, the gray house, looks like it would would work, would fit. Mm -hmm. you know? Under the Abington zoning bylaw, the the setback is measured to the, the foundation wall, to the building wall. The, we don't go to the sonar tube for a deck. Um, it only so the setbacks are determined by the actual house foundation, not the deck. So if, if the deck was moved to the center of the house or slightly enlarged than what's shown, that wouldn't be a, a violation of the, of the setbacks. So you're you're definitely going to have a, a square house, fifty by twenty eight house, definitely. No larger than that. It has yeah, to but, but definitely, that's it's it could it can't be smaller though. Why why could if you gave us a because if we if you had a variance to go 10 feet from the lot line and then you're only going to be you're going to come into the building department with 15 feet to the lot line it it, it the variance isn't matching the permit the variance isn't matching the building permit I, I but you're no you're saying that i cannot get any closer than 10 feet in your hypothetical if i end up building the house 12 feet then that's less it's more conforming but right. I, I don't think that's not going to match the variance that you got. The variance is based on what the variance, the building, the building permit's going to be based on this variance. 
in the van and the variance should be based on the plan that's submitted just so you right so that's part of the record that this so is the, the problem record. the problem is mr riley is that you could come back and say oh no we we're going to add on to our house and we're going to make it now to the 10 foot line when you got a building permit for 12 feet mm -hmm. you know it, it doesn't it opinion. doesn't match I, I, that has never been to my knowledge it's never been the way that it's been pursued in the town of abington and other towns i've worked with if you know many times with some of the you know if this was a subdivision they would show building footprints of where proposed homes would go to show that they either conform or where setbacks might be required and as right. long as it, it so if a let's say a five foot variance was granted on a side lot line as long as you don't get closer than let's say we need 25 we're asking for 20 a 20 foot setback or a five foot variance um so the board's decision is that the house can be no closer than 20 foot to the lot 20 foot to the lot line if the house is built and it is 19 feet that's a violation but if it's 21 feet or 25 feet away it doesn't violate the variance I, I don't necessarily agree, but I don't have any backup on me right now, so I can't really um, argue with you at this point. But um, I, um, you, you could be right, Sean. You could be. I, I just, well, I don't. Yeah. It doesn't seem to me. I, I don't know. Just maybe the logical part of me doesn't. It doesn't seem like it, but I don't know. I think part of the problem we'd have, though, um, Sean, as you already said, you know, even if we were to grant this variance now, it couldn't be, uh, you know, as planned submitted because you're saying that. The, you might carve out different lots than you proposed on these plans. Nothing that would affect what's before the zoning board. Because the lie complies. I don't have a problem with that. I, I think. All right, then I will uh, forget I even mentioned it. We will go with what is submitted as drawn. <laughs> what is, that, that's just nothing wrong with that. You can approve these lot lines if you think that that's something you need to do. These, these lots conform. I, I thought that you would prefer that we straighten the lot line, but if you would rather not, that's okay. Well, that's not that's not our decision. That, that's that's up to the petitioner if he wants to straighten a lot line or not. If he wants to straighten a lot line, then he should come back to us with a plan with a straight lot line. If he doesn't want to straighten a lot line, that's and he wants to go with this one, that's fine too. It's actually a form A uh, decision for the planning board. But they, never that, nevertheless, I I don't know I, I, what is your solution. Then you would like us to either come to you with a house that we would like to build and hope that we find a buyer that likes that type of house or wait until we find a buyer and solidify the house plans and then come back at that point in time uh, that just well i guess i guess if town council is comfortable that this plan is in the variance is going to be based if we grant it is going to be based on this plan submitted so the house has to be what is it, 50 by 28 we, we will agree to that. If that, if Jason, happens, I don't want to speak to you. Is that something that you can agree to, Jason? If the hold on, let me just finish, please. I'm sorry, Andrew. And in, 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 is this where it's going to be cited? I don't know if you have a if, if you had a better plan that shows exactly where this is going to be cited. Um, but if this is if this is sufficient for us to be able to use as the plan approving the variance, then I guess if you want to stick with this plan, that's fine. But I, I guess I would ask Amy if that if that. If she thinks this plan is sufficient, does the I I I, I can only see the plan on the share screen, so I'm not. It so shows it, all the setbacks. It shows does the front it show all setback. the setbacks and exactly yeah. where it's going to be and. Thirty six feet off the front. I can pull it up again. And they're just going to come in with a square house. Thirty rectangular house. Thirty six feet right Sorry. there. The front setback. It has to be twenty five. It's thirty six. It will be twenty feet closest to the uh, lot line here. 14.3 over here. And then there's, it's hundreds of feet to the back, to the rear lot line. We would submit this plan for your approval. If the board were to approve this, Jason, stop me if I'm wrong, you would build a 50 by 28 foot house in this exact location. But the front, so, so I'm looking at it and it's the front left, wait, no, right, right front corner 
Yep. That looks like it's further away from the from the lot line because the lot line turns right there. So yep. what's the distance there? Because that doesn't look like it's the same distance as the distance that's in yellow, which I can't even read. Sorry. It's 14.3. It's 14.3 at its tightest tight. bottom. And that but, is with the basis of the variance. But that's my whole point is, is how are we going to know with the nonconformities of this house if we don't know all of the nonconformities? So it's 14.3 there, but where is it at, the, at that corner that I'm referencing? Same with the other lot line. I just noticed the other lot line is also skewed. So it would be more than 20 at the front. The back of it's 20, but the front might be even could be 25. I don't and know. All I can tell you is that has never been the process in front of the Abner Zoning Board as long as I've been practicing. It's always been what is the what is the maximum variance that's required? What is the tightest spot of any building? And that's the variance that's granted. And then you show the footprint of the building. We, what you're suggesting is that we would ask for a, we would show like the back corner is 20 feet off and the front corner is 25 feet off and ask for separate variances? No, 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 no. No, nope. you would ask for a variance from the side point. setback. Yeah, just you would ask for yeah, a, variance from, a, a variance from the side setback and all of those need variances, they all get it from the side setback. I'm not saying that a variance that's on one corner of the house is 14 is a different variance than one corner of the house that's 16. What I'm saying is in two years when somebody comes in and they want to put an addition on and they're going to claim that it's not more non-conforming, how are we going to know it's not more non-conforming? We go back to the plan where the variance was granted and that's how we figure out if it's not more non-conforming or if it is more non-conforming, they need another variance. If it's not more non-conforming, they won't. I, I don't, I mean. I can just say it's, it's never been the process or procedure here. We've always, go, go, we've always gone with the shortest or the largest variance, let's say. The tightest spot has always been what this board has approved and what the planning board has approved. If we're gonna start a new policy procedure, we have to, gather that information. This has been prepared by a, a licensed surveyor. I would submit to you once again, I think we've set, satisfied the variance. I, I, sorry, gentlemen, I didn't think that this would be uh, a long debate. I, I thought this would be a good thing. The Whalens were very excited to find a buyer who would agree to only build a single family. Um, and I know the Whalens are concerned about the deadlines. We have a deadline to get a building permit, um, but we'll do our best. Uh, we haven't opened it up to the floor yet. Is there anything else from the board? No, no, no. Right no. Okay. All right. That being the case, I'll close it to the board. Open it up to the floor. Anyone on the anyone in the audience have any comments or? If you want to unmute, just use your chat box. All right, seeing nothing, closes to the floor. Um, so it seems as though there's a certain amount of hesitancy with respect to this. Um, do you think you would benefit at all from perhaps giving Amy a chance to review or you know, perhaps getting more definitive plans, maybe giving Amy a chance to review those and then taking this up with us again next month or? Yeah, if you, if you feel this, this not enough information. If you could give me, just tell us what information you would like, we will certainly provide that to the board. It's, our proposal is to simply build a 50 by 28 foot house in the area shown on the plan. Okay. Uh, and I think, well, I won't say, but I think the plan speaks for itself. If you approve it, that's where the house goes. Well, would you want the opportunity to straight, I mean, like we said, straighten out those lot lines, maybe give a little bit more dimension there. Yeah. Okay. If, if it makes the, the board, if the board thinks that's a good idea, we can certainly do that. I'd like to just add that I, I worked on this engineer with Norman Clapp, my licensed registered surveyor. Um, and we developed these lot lines and um, the box of the home and we have some topography issues as well. Um, so the placement of the home was pretty important, not just, um, you know, that's how we established a 14 foot three side setback on the right and a 20 foot side setback on the left. We have um, some water to control, um, to control, um, and then a slope from the existing home to the new home. 
Um, this type of plan uh, I submitted to the town before for building permits. Uh, Norman, uh, who I work with on a regular basis, um, so designs this exact type of plan, not just for Abington, but for multiple towns. So it's within normal design. Um, I would be happy to submit the plan Norman designed and the home that uh, Sean showed, um, I built many times. And I feel like that is a product I would be comfortable moving forward with to try to advertise and pre-sell. So I would be happy yeah. to um, move forward with what we have submitted. Gentlemen. Andy. Yes. I think you said Andy. Amy, oh. have you, uh, <laughs> sorry. Amy, you have anything else? Um, well, again, Me? If, no, I, I don't have anything else. Uh, if, Andy? If, 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 if uh, any of the board members feel like you need more, some sort of more definitive information, just, just say it and let us know what it is. We'll be happy to come back. If you think there is uh, sufficient information, and we're ready to proceed. But I wouldn't want you to say no because you don't think that, uh, you know, you'd like instead wanted us to, to show the dimensions off of each corner of the house or something like that. We can do that, but I'm, I'm not sure that's necessary, but if that's something you want to ask for, we'll comply. You think that's necessary, Amy, to show the dimensions off uh, each corner of the house? Would, be, would that be preferred? Um, I that that's just how I've always seen it. Um, you know, you know, I mean, it kills me to say, but I, you know, attorney Riley could be right. He really could be. I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't have much background here, um, that I got, you know, I was kind of thrown into this. Um, you know, I, I think that, um, you know, he, he's, he's right on the, on the deck. It, the, the definition of side yard is, a yard extending the full length of the lot between the nearest building wall and the side lot line. So he, he's correct on that. So we are only looking at the square. We're not looking at decks or anything, it appears. Um, it, it, you know, um, I mean, I, I guess, I don't know, it's up to you guys, but I, I, just, I still see, if we don't have all the dimensions, it, I still see it being a little bit. Is that something you can do, Sean? Yeah, well, I, I don't, again, I wanna help the Whalens get what they want. And I wanna preserve, yeah. preserve their house yeah. and require a single family house yet. So if you guys need to push this back another month and we'll show you additional setback measurements. And if, you wanna, want, and if you wanna straighten that, if you wanna straighten that line out at the same time. Right. Right, I, I'll ask the surveyor about the, you know, perhaps we should show that. That way you'll have a plan you can approve and that we would then uh, submit a Form A plan. Uh, yeah, I don't even think that you need a, I don't think you need an endorsement to come here because it it's, no. it's qualifies for endorsement. So right. you, you can come in with a Form A that hasn't been endorsed. That's, I don't think that's an issue. Yeah, I just wanted to be upfront with the board to say that, you know, if, if you granted the variances, we might go to the planning board and ask to straighten that line out, which wouldn't change your variance. Um, and I didn't want anyone to say, hey, you guys changed the lot line on us because we have the right to do that. Yeah. I'm just trying to be straight. I appreciate that. And John, you said they were running into a time frame with the building department. What's, is there any issues there? Or? No, it's a, it's a time frame with the, um, the contract. The okay. Whalen gave Mr. Um, Kennedy only a certain amount of time to get his permits. Okay. So they have a right to rescind and find another buyer. Uh, so I am trying to help all parties make this work. Okay. Including Mr. Buckley. Um, that being the case, do you want to, um, I guess, be a, do you want to make a motion to continue? Yeah, can I ask, what's the submittal date? Well, it, it, this would be a very minor change or an update to this plan. So um, if I submitted this at least a week before your next meeting, that would be sufficient, I would think, right? What is it? Yeah. Nancy? What's the usual posting, Nancy, for, I mean, it wouldn't be re-noticed because it's a continuation, but typically when do we have things? It's 
it gets posted two weeks before the meeting. It's, it's really, when do you guys get your materials distributed to you? When do you need it by? A week before. A, a week, week before would be fine, before? yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so your next meeting, I believe, is Thursday, February 11th. Yes. I'm going to tell my surveyor I need an updated plan by February 1st, and that way we know it's in your hands well before. Okay. And Amy, you'll, you'll take a look at everything, Amy? Just uh... I will. I will. Don't you wish you went home now, Amy? I, I, well, I am home, but I could. <laughs> I wish I had left the meeting. Quick commute, Amy. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. If I, I might pretend I get disconnected. <laughs> no, no. That's next. And just, no. just, just to let you, I don't know if this will ease your mind at all, but as far as I'm concerned, I think Amy's right. I think this would conform with a request for a variance and, yeah. and that both topographically in the shape of the lot based upon what, uh, what your client just said as far as the topography goes. So I, I think if, if you get those specifics, as far as I'm concerned, I think you, you probably have met the. Uh... I, I appreciate that um, reassurance because obviously we don't want to spend money and time. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right, gentlemen. So you, so you said it was February 11th is the next meeting, Nancy? Yeah. All right. So I'll make a motion to continue um, the petition until February 11th. Can you just uh, okay. confirm with Kevin Tachi that that's a good date for a Zoom meeting? How about you can, we will continue to your February meeting. Okay. Whatever that is. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank, Thank you, thanks, everyone. You. We will see you Thank next you. month. Thank have you. Good evening. Uh, well, you still have that other, that first hearing, unless it didn't show up, right? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Yes. We're, we're going to continue. Yep. 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 They're here. Oh, they're here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Right. Good night, everyone. How about me? Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Am I, am I released or? Yes, thank you. Yes. yes. Have a okay. good night, Amy. It was nice thank to see you guys. I'll good see you next you. month. I'll All see right. you on the Okay. Sounds good. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Nancy. Bye, Liz. Bye. Good Bye, to see Amy. you. See Bye. you guys. All right. It being after 7 p.m., the Edmonton Zoning Board of Appeals will hear the petition of Samuel and Judy Judith. Caselio. Uh, we already read the petition, so the Caselios are. Am I saying that incorrectly? Oh, the FWM mute. Sorry, mute. Yeah, he's working on it. There you go. There you go. <clears throat> Thank you. Good yep. evening. It's actually Cassiello. You were very Ca close. Cassiello. Sorry about that. That's All right. Okay. Um, we, we previously read the petition, so if you um, just want to step, well, step forward. Just let us know um, why you're here, the, um, what your petition's about, the relief you're requesting. Sure, I'm gonna introduce you to Doug Cardinal. He's our um, general contractor consultant and he'll explain it to you. Hi, good, uh, good evening members of the board. Uh, my name is Doug Cardinelli. I'm here on behalf of the owners, Ms. Judith Caselio and Mr. Samuel Caselio, 36 Strawberry Lane, in support of their proposal to construct an in-law apartment above their existing two car garage. Building plans have been submitted for your review. My 40 years as a licensed builder will ensure the structure will be built in a professional, workmanlike, timely manner with special attention to safety. Ms. Corrine uh, Casilio is here to say hello and I uh, might want to introduce your mother. Uh, come on over and say hello. <laughs> oh, shoot. Okay. She's a homeowner. <laughs> <laughs> This proposal seeks relief from the zoning bylaw section 175-32I in issuance of a special permit to construct an approximate 720 square foot addition above the existing two car garage. There will be no change in the footprint of this garage. The first level will remain a two car garage. The existing home is an eight rooms, four bedroom, two and a half bath, on 4.46 oh, 4 acres, 110 feet of frontage, and 2,314 square feet of living space. Judith and Samuel Casilio have resided at this 36 Strawberry Lane mm -hmm. for more than 37 years. The proposed addition will consist of a one bedroom, one bathroom, and an open floor plan, kitchen, dining, living room. The construction will be in compliance of all building, plumbing, electrical, egress, HVAC, and energy codes. A reg check can be provided. 
Upon completion of the exterior, this proposed design will conform nicely with the existing home and will, will not have any detrimental effect on any of Butter's homes in the neighborhood. The ridge line will be in close proximity of the existing home ridge line and approximately nine feet below the approved or allowed height in zoning dimensional and density regulations. There'll be no change in the topography of this property. Construction will not occur within the Evanston local floodplain and wetland protection overlay district. The plot plan is provided and recorded as lot seven, 36 Strawberry Lane. The architect's plan for this proposed addition has been provided for your review. There'll be no change in the driveway dimensions. I have also researched Abington assessing records of all abutters and homes and, and discovered the following. There are 22 homes on the abutters list. 14 homes have two car garages. Seven homes have living space above their garages. Three homes have five bedrooms. All homes are in the R30 zone medium density and have compiled specific features of each of the 22 homes prior uh, uh, for your review. And uh, basically all of my, I, I have here, uh, this is from the Abington, is that showing? I have these files here. I basically took these right from the Abington Assessor's Office uh, and I listed all of the features and pointed out the different uh, uh, features of uh, that, that are similar to or greater than the proposed plan. On behalf of Ms. Judith Casilio and Samuel Casilio, given all the information provided in this pr presentation, I'm asking this board to approve this request for a special permit to build an in-law apartment above their garage. Respectfully, Doug Catanelli and Ms. Uh, Green may want to say something too. Asking them to work. Oh, yes, please. Um, we appreciate your consideration in, in looking at this project and hopefully you'll approve it. Um, just a little background in terms of why we're doing it. And I don't know if it's important, but um, you know, I sold my condo in Rockland in September. I'm moving back in with my parents. My dad's 86, my mom's 74. And so many people are doing multi-generational living now and it just suits our family. And I wanna be here to be able to take care of my family, but of course have my own space. So um, that's, that's what we're looking to accomplish. So hopefully the board approves and we can continue with this. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. Sure. Um, and I'm, I'm, we heard from the building inspector on this and the plans are in conformance. Um, you said it was, it was gonna be about 700 and something square feet. Yeah, so you, you can't exceed 900 or 50% of the floor area, which I believe the existing is what, 2300 you said? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you're within those requirements. Um, and I mean, my opinion, I, I think, I appreciate the, the um, the drawings, the um, the architectural drawings that you sent. I think the design is in keeping with the neighborhood, um, fits in well. So I don't have any further questions or issues. I don't have any questions. I don't either, no. Okay. No. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna close it to the board. I'm gonna open it to the floor. Is there anybody here um, wants to speak on this matter? All right. Seeing nobody, I will close it to the floor, bring it back to the board. Um, does anyone want to make a motion? I'll make a motion, Andrew, that we allow the petition of Samuel and Judith Casilio, 36 Strawberry Lane, Abington, for a special permit under 175-32-I at 36 Strawberry Lane. The property is located on Assessor's Map 58, Lot 73 in the R30 zone. And I actually want, we usually caution people just to make sure every year you have to file a notification. Uh, notification. Yeah, notification. Yeah. It basically says that if family members living there and if for some reason the family member moves out, you can't rent it or anything like that. So, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Sure. Yep. That said, do I, do I have a second on the motion? Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. It's granted. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you very Sorry much. Sorry you had to sit through everything. two hours of hearing before that. It's okay. It's very educational. <laughs> very educational. <laughs> All right. Have a good evening, folks. Thank you. you. Thanks for all your help. Thank you. All right. Gentlemen, do we have anything else before we close? I think, I think we were discussing the rules and regulations if we want to continue or want to wait. 
Was Bob's not today? No, he's just sent an email. He said he apologized, but he got held up at work. Okay. Um, um, what do you guys want to do about this rules and regulations? I'm all set with them if they want to. I don't know. We've been waiting for a long time. To yeah, I mean. Yeah, I, I read through them. And um, um, yeah, I, I can understand you guys want to do this. Um, and um, I read everything. So we want to vote on it or whatever we have to do. Um, Again, I think Nancy, you know, I just hope it doesn't add any more work for Nancy and we'll all work with her if she needs any, you know, advice on anything. And I mean, um, yeah, these don't need to go before the town or anything to be, if we need to change something, if it's not working for Nancy, we can change right. it the next Only meeting. Right. All right. Yeah. So. Okay. Cause we got it. Uh, Nancy does all the paperwork yep. for us. So. Yeah. Uh, no, great. Yeah. Uh, I, um, yeah. Okay. If you want to vote, we can. Um, do we have to vote, or how you want to do yeah, it? Yeah, I think we should move to a, move to approve the Abington Zoning Board, Abington Zoning Board of Appeals instructions, and the Zoning Board of Appeals rules and regulations as submitted in our last submission. I guess in uh, was it? When did we meet last November? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, yep. I think so. All right. I'll um I'll I'll second that. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. You have a, I have them all updated, Nancy. If you want, I can send them to you. Uh, yeah. Yes, please. Yeah, just so you have them. It was okay. sent uh, to everybody, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah I will. I'll send them to you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Do I have a motion? Anything else? No. no. All right. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All right, everyone. All right. Good evening. Take care. Be safe. Right. We'll yeah, see you in February. Safe. See you, Nancy. All right. Take Thank care. You.